Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson, and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions. We're a teaching center in San Dimas, California, and we focus on skills enhancement, broadening your dental knowledge, all within the framework of excellence using state-of-the-art teaching equipment. Let's talk today about instrument sharpening. And I wanted to show you two different instruments here. The one on the top is a 10714 enamel hatchet, and the one on the bottom is a 15814 enamel hatchet. And what do you think those first numbers refer to? The width of the blade, okay, in tens of millimeters. So this, this instrument here is 15, which means 1.5, and this instrument over here is 10, which means 1.0. So we'll take a moment to find the measurement on the instrument itself by holding it up and seeing that there is in fact a 15 here as the first instrument, the first number on the instrument. And that 15 means this is 1.5. That goes for all hand instruments. Now, when it comes to sharpening the instruments, this is a sharpening stone. And this happens to be kind of a nice one that allows you to have more of a coarse sharpen and a more of a fine sharpen on the other side. I put a little bit of oil on here. This happens to be just coconut oil. You could use uh, any type of hand piece oil or whatever. Oil is oil. And you put it on here, just, it just makes it a little bit easier to sharpen. Now, the sharpening stones that you might get at the test site are brown. These little brown stones that you'll see that are the Arkansas sharpening stones that are typical of most instrument cassettes. It doesn't matter what the color is. It really doesn't. It, the key is that it, when this goes up against steel, steel loses. Okay, So we can sharpen things, thankfully. So here's the, the goal when it comes to sharpening instruments. You want to always hold the instrument with a modified pen grasp. So you can see here I'm using a modified pen grasp and I'm going to use my ring finger and pinky to stabilize up against the side of the sharpening stone. I want to also identify the bevel. The bevel in this case is easy to see because it reflects light back and it looks like a little parallelogram right there. Okay, So that's going to be up against the stone. The bevel is touching the stone. Okay, so. You're going to have the instrument straight up and down, okay? So you're actually, you're, you're perpendicular to the, to the stone. Just straight up and down like that, okay? Straight up. Then you're going to tip the instrument over 45 degrees. That's the appropriate amount of tip. A 45 degree angle is what's required on dental bevels because the substrate is very hard. Now, a 45 degree bevel is actually not the most cut efficient cutting edge. If you had a knife in your kitchen with a 45 degree cutting edge, you couldn't cut through anything. But if you were chopping wood, it works really well if it was that. If you're chopping something even harder than wood, like teeth, it, it, it works even better still because it's more durable. It's not the most efficient cutting edge, but it, efficiency is not the issue here. It needs to stand up to the hard surface. So I want you to know that when you see a chisel in a wood, wood carving box or something, or a knife, it's going to have a much steeper bevel. And this is normal. All right, so we're going to take the instrument, and we're going to tip it back 45 degrees, and I want you to hold it against the side, hold your finger against the side of the stone, and pull it towards you. And as you pull towards you, you're going to make a little black stripe, a gray stripe along the stone. That stripe should be the same width of the instrument cutting edge. So the instrument cutting edge is 1.5. That stripe should be 1.5. That means we're cutting this in a, we're sharpening this in a nice even way. Look how stable my hand is. Looks like a machine, right? And when you're sharpening the other side, once again, identify where the bevel is. Okay. Okay. We see the bevel. We're going to hold the instrument up, tip it back 45 degrees, and now we're going to be doing a push stroke. Okay, I'm just showing you fast so you can see what kind of a strike you can leave. Then you can turn the, the stone over, 
if it's got a s smoother side. By the way, light colors in dentistry always mean more refined. So when you're looking at two different colors and you want to know which disc to use first or which abrasive to use first, you always use the one that's farthest away from white. Here you can see we would pull this towards us and be able to get the right amount of sharp. The gingival margin trimmer has got the same 45 degree requirement, but the instrument is, is curved, okay? So you want to take the instrument and think about it, don't think about the curve, think about the, the straight line that goes from the shank down to the end of the instrument. That's your straight line. Don't, don't make your 45 degrees relative to this, make your 45 degrees relative to straight up and down. And so you want to tip it back this way, okay? Now, the other thing you want to notice about this instrument after tipping it is it needs to lean this direction as well, right? Because this is a gingival margin trimmer, right? See the angulation of the end of that instrument is angling, right? There it is. You can see that reasonably well, okay? So we're going to take the instrument straight up and down, tip it back 45, and now here comes the cool move, this. You see how I laid it over? And depending on how much you lay it over <clears throat> will impact the intensity of the bevel. Whether the bevel is a 30 degree bevel, a 45 degree bevel, a 60 degree bevel can all be accomplished here. Sometimes your hand will hit the bench top. So in that particular situation, you want to grab out, grab something that you can raise your hand up on. I'm just showing you this on my loop box that you could Go ahead then and stabilize the stone, tip it over, lean it back, and, and lean it back, tip it over for the bevel. And you can tip it over however you like, depending on the bevel that's required. It's a little more difficult to sharpen, but the key is this finger is sitting on the stone. This is sliding, so putting a little bit of oil along the side of your finger can help too, so you don't have so much friction. And you're going back to sharpen the other direction, once again, remember I would start on the pink side and finish on the white, but I'm just showing you the, the holding position. Tip it back 45, lead it over for the bevel, and push. Do you notice that even though this is um, a one millimeter wide bevel, a one millimeter wide instrument, do you notice that the stripe is wider? because we're cutting this on a diagonal, right? So